everyone and welcome to Soul GPS where we learn to take our lives back in our hands after narcissistic abuse. And today I have a video for you that's been a long time in the making. Um, I've been preparing for it because it's a very deep subject that um, you know requires, I would say, a pretty in-depth e explanation because it's quite controversial and it's um, it goes deep. And I think that a lot of people may take it, it may anger a lot of people. Let's just put it this way. Um, it is a way of taking a sword and really slaying through the lies that have been occluding most of our cultural thinking, uh, cultural conditioning especially in our today's day and age, in our modern civilization. And um, it is a really difficult subject to talk about because it's acted for a very long time like a band-aid on a um, gashing wound of society. And that is really the purpose that it should have, that it was made to serve. It was made to make people look the other way and ignore what's really going on in the world. And it ties really, really closely with narcissistic abuse and especially the type of narcissistic abuse that um, is very widespread, that is global, hence um, the title. But it also, as you will hear me go through each and every point, it also really maps down and it trickles down and it scales down all the way to the relationship, whether it is familial, whether it is romantic, whether it is between friends, um, as well as just the to continue down the the um, the topic of the inner schism that we have within ourselves, because we are bathing in an environment, in a mentality that purposely divides us. And I want to make a little note here, and um, I want to be very clear about the reason why I'm why I'm going to say what I'm about to say. Targets of narcissistic abuse, all of us who have suffered, we suffered at the hand of malice, at the hand of ill intent, at the hand of evil, to put it bluntly. It was not right, it was unfair, it was a violation. I'm not going to say but and I'm not going to say however. This is the end of the sentence right there. The narcissist, if any of you are watching, and I know you are because I've been getting some hate mail too, so <laughs> I know you're watching and I'm, I'm, I'm triggering some of you. So I just want to say this to you, and, and this is the one time I'm going to be actually nice for a moment to the narcissist, even though uh, I, I have no room uh, for them in my life at this point and never intend to ever again. But I just want to say that you too are victims here of this incredibly toxic system that's been in the making for, I don't know, centuries, millennia. It's been a long time. There's a whole idea of power and control that comes from the above where you have a select few control and subjugate those who are below them, those who are beneath them. And we all have been caught up in the web and there are very few people who are actually have been able to extricate themselves from this system. And it is my true hope and my mission in this life really to do as much work as I can in order to free as many people as I can. And that even includes the narcissist. So uh, this video might resonate with you um, because maybe you will see in it or maybe you're too far gone. Um, maybe you'll see in it that you too have been caught up in this really disgusting web of control and the reason why you continue to perpetuate this form of mentality is because um, you bought into it. You bought into it and you believe that this is the only way to be, that you're either controlled or you're the one in control. But there is a whole different way of being and there's a whole different way of relating and that's, I'm gonna leave it at that because 
I'm not the kind of person who, uh, you know, would devote her life to uh, healing the narcissist or helping the narcissist because I just, I just don't know enough, and I am too much of a sensitive person that uh, being in in the in a vicinity of of this kind of person um, makes me feel really bad. So I, I would rather focus on the other side of the equation and work with people um, who have been victimized, who have been targeted, um, who have been suffering at the hands of those. So okay, so enough with the preamble, let's get to it. So I want to give you guys five main points uh, that I've been able to distill through my research of how the New Age movement, and I'm going to make a point towards the end of this video that it actually is more of a religion, it's become a religion, it has roots its roots in a really awesome intent, um, but it got usurped, it got co-opted, as everything that's good in the world does, including religion. See, I think that religion in and of itself, there's nothing really wrong with it. I, uh, I mean, sorry, not nothing wrong with it, there's a lot wrong with it, but the, uh, the, the um, origins of religion is the whole idea of connecting with the divine. So the origins are pure. It started with a pure intent, but then later on it's been deserved, it's become actually a really big business, and now it's being used as a divide and conquer strategy, as controlled opposition, um, where you take you know opposing religions and put them against each other in order to create conflict, make people battle each other out, and then you pick through the scraps, you know, and gain power and control that way. So we're seeing that in real time right now uh, playing out on a global scale. It's disgusting. Um, so it, it's always been my stance here. This is preamble number two. <laughs> um, it's always been my stance that religion and spirituality are extremely individual, intimate belief system things, whatever we want to call it that every single person is 100% entitled to having their own point of view when it comes to how they relate to the spirit and uh, the spirit that dwells within them, of course, and the spirit that also dwells without that we are part of. So I'm not gonna, again, go d too deep into that because then I'm going to start talking about what I believe in and so on. And you don't need to hear about this because like I said, you are entitled to your own um, beliefs, your own thinking about this and, um, and so on. So. So, but I do think that New Age has become a religion, and a religion in the, the, the negative sense, and I will tell you why when we get back to the end uh, of this video. And it's been used as a way to control opposition, meaning that if, if we only had, let's say, Catholicism in the world and nothing else, and everybody was pressured to only believe in that one way of things being things, it would be very easy to um, to spot it and spot the tyranny of it. And people would eventually go like, oh, what the fuck? I'm, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to subscribe to it. I, I'm entitled to think however I want to, right? So it would be immediately noticeable. The reason why it isn't immediately noticed is because now we have other religions, right? You have this against that and this. And before people even, life is short, before they catch up to the game, of how the opposing forces are being played against each other. Um, you know, it's usually uh, kind of late, <laughs> if I may say. Not for all, not for all. And this video intense, is intended for, for as many people to see through this deception as possible. And so now we're, at, we, we've been, well, since around the 60s, 70s or so, where this movement um, really gained ground. We've been in this state, in this stage where People are standing up against this. This um, th this this is a response against the tradition, the, the tyranny of tradition, the tyranny of old world thinking, right? So you have the Muslim religion, you have the Buddhist religion, you have the uh, this, and and the intent was to take the best out of each, which was really cool, you know, bring them all together and say, well, we're all in this together, we're all one, which yeah, we're all connected, we're all one, and like, we're all brothers and sisters, we shouldn't be killing each other, for goodness sakes, you know, we should come together and fight evil together. Uh, but instead, you know, um, it's been used in a subversive fashion, not even in a uh, overt aggressive fashion, because it's not the flavor that it carries, but it's been, it's been even worse, because, see, 
the new age movement, the new age belief systems have been so perverted and so snuck under the radar and dressed in such a beautiful veneer that they're actually just like the covert narcissist. And so many people are caught up in it and they don't know it. And it's a way, when you internalize, it's a way to self-victimize yourself. So it's, it's just like with the narc, meaning when you're exposed to this relationship, right? You're like, you're getting, you're getting beat up from the outside in, or especially when you're like raised in a narcissistic family, then you really get it. You really get it good because you get it from the beginning. So you're indoctrinated into that way of thinking since you're little. So you don't know anything else. So then you go out into the world and you're, you know, it's, it's so easy for the narc, for the other narcs to get to you because you don't resist it because it feels familiar. Okay. Right. So, so, so this is, so this is what we're dealing with here. So it's like the covert narcissist. So, so uh, I see what I, I know what I was going to say. So at first it comes from the outside in, right? The child, the, um, the partner, you know, whichever stage in your development you are at when you are faced with this kind of person. Because it also happens, I've mentioned that before, but it also happens to very healthy people who just fall in love with the wrong person who is so good at deception that we don't even know until it's too late that we've just, you know, there's a bunch of grenades that just went out in us inside of our psyche. Um, but then what happens, and it's one of the reasons why it's so difficult to heal from this and why it takes so much time is because we internalize the abuse and then we walk around, even though we're free from it, we keep abusing ourselves with the thinking. And, and this is really especially, it's really visible from the, from the um, familial level because on the partner level, there's this cognitive dissonance going on when, we, when that, that takes precedence, right? And it's the idea of thinking like, was this person good or was this person bad? You know, did they really, but they, but they were like, they were nice to me and they did all these wonderful things and these, all these surprises. And, you know, I remember the sweet lovemaking we had and it was just so amazing about you know, all that stuff. And then on the other hand, but they raised their hand on me and they tell, told me the, the most insidious, hurtful things. And it's like, oh, like, which is which? Well, both are true. One is a con, the nice part. And then the negative is the real thing because no good person who really truly loved you would go down that avenue of being negative to you. It just, it just doesn't happen with good people. They just don't do that sort of stuff, you know, but since you've been mostly around, if, if you come from this background, since you've been mostly around abusive people, then you don't know that. You think that that is a form of love, which it isn't. Uh, love is waiting for you on the other side of the mountain. And so we're going to climb the mountain together. Okay, so internalizing of the abuse. So you'll see, you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, this, this was a long intro, but I think it was important to say all those things. So I'm gonna give you guys five ways in which the new age movement, new age ideology, it's called an ideology, because it's not a philosophy. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you why once we get down to a, one of the points. But this ideology, which is a belief system. And what is a belief system? Belief is something that may or may not be true. You just take it at face value. You don't test it. You don't, you don't actually spend time thinking about it. And this, and, and th this way of thinking that's classic, comes from classical education. And here's another intro, intro continues, but it's important. So in classical education, we were taught philosophy, rhetoric, critical thinking, all of these different skills, even things like geometry, mathematics, different approach to life, deductive way of thinking versus inductive way of thinking. You know, you were, you, you, the mind of a person that was classically trained was exposed to many different ways of thought moving through the, through the, through the brain, through the mind. So you can take an object and you can look at it from multiple points of view. This is how you're able to arrive at something that is closer to truth. What's happening now, what's been happening over the last few uh, decades is atrocious. I was actually a valedictorian of my college. And I'll tell you guys, a year or two after I left uh, school, I, I forgot pretty much everything I'd learned because it was pretty much useless. The only thing that stuck with me that I used to this day is writing, but I really sucked at writing back then. I was technically good according to the standards of college, which are no longer my standards, but um, everything else was... So 
that is because we have shifted into a different mode of education in today's world. We're doing something that's called outcome-based education. I'm going to put actually a link to a very interesting video uh, that may open your eyes about what's been really going on uh, here in the um, since the 50s, how uh, American education system, uh, European too, has been has been changed in order to um, fulfill the role of training rather than educating uh, children so that they're, they're ready for labor after they leave college, after they leave school. So they become workers, not thinkers, workers. So very many of us could use um, quite a bit of critical thinking training and actually I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm planning to make a video just specifically on this, but I'm gonna in, interject this here real quick because again, this I think this is really useful, is many of you have asked me, how do I stop the obsession about the narcissist? How do I do this? Shift your thinking, study something, pick up some books, go deep into what's happening in the world, get your mind interested in something else, even though it may feel kind of rigid and weird, you know, but your mind is going to be continually magnetized to this per to this person, right? And there is a certain amount of thinking that is good to, to do. Um, that it's very good to, to, to let yourself like go down some of those rabbit holes and really look at it from a, from a true standpoint, you know, see it for what it was. Don't believe in the deception. See where the lies were. Like this is going to hopefully bring you some relief. But at some point, like after you've done that enough of that, it's time to focus your mind on something really useful on something that's really going to enrich you. So pick up a classical book, you know, um, pick up some philosophy, um, you know, check out something that maybe normally you wouldn't just to challenge yourself to think differently. So I just want to put it out there. So, okay. Where was I? Okay, I'm just going to now jump into the, the five <laughs> ways in which New Age ideology has been hijacking our mind and has been keeping us in this state of half asleep, mind controlled um, uh, humanity, people, and, um, and how it links with narcissistic abuse. Okay, point number one. New Age deception, number one, is evil is necessary. Evil is necessary in order to balance out the good. Think about that for a moment. Evil is necessary to balance out the good. You know, most people are going to think immediately like yin and yang, good and bad, duality, right? They're going to jump right in. And what's, what's really sad is that you, you, you go down to that level and then you're not going to go a, a level deeper. The leap, level deeper is where the, where the juice is. But we're just going to stop there and be like, okay, yeah, yeah, and continue on, right? And now there's a hook. Belief system has been uh, sunk in. The seed is in and it's going to start sprouting. So every time you see evil acts, evil deeds, you're going to think like, it's going to hurt. You're going to be like, oh, this is horrible. This is, but maybe I guess it's like, it's got to be this way. This is how the world is not <laughs> it is not it is not that is a deception it is a way of hijacking the the duality principle or the polarity principle of the way the universe works which is the yin and yang right um so the yin and yang what is the yin and yang it's a feminine and masculine it's two polarities it's movement within and movement without it's gravity and radiation it's in and out it's the pulse of the universe. Uh, the yin is uh, typically the female side, not typically, it is, it represents the female side, which is the cosmic womb. When you look out um, at the sky at night, it's dark, it's black. That's the cosmic womb, that's the yin, that is the container that holds all, all matter uh, within itself. And the light stars, the, the matter that floats, the, 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 the luminosity, Actually, there's more to it because it looks like it's just very, just speckled. It's kind of like there's more, looks like there's more yin than there's more yang, than, than yang, but it's not the case. They're actually balanced with each other. But we as humans, we can only see a very tiny spectrum of light. We only see the visible light, the, the rainbow. So we only see that part of the light as it leaves the star. But there is more light around the star. There's light actually everywhere. It's everywhere. We just don't see it. So this space, this darkness is filled to the brim with the yang energy. So yang inside of the yin. And when you also look at it from just purely physiological standpoint, you know, the way we're built, men and women, um, man projects out, woman accepts in. We have to have it in order to, for this experience to continue on forever. Right? That is manifestation. That's the play, the divine play or Leela in Hinduism. All right. 
So, this insidious belief that evil is necessary plays off of the idea that the dark is evil, that that is bad. That's that's what you think of it. It's not going to say that uh, maybe, although no, it does, it, yeah, I've heard that before, but, but that's kind of what we tend to think, you know, that the dark is necessary and the light is good, right? You can actually flip it upside down because there, there are people who are, um, I'm going to go off on a teeny tiny mini tangent here, but uh, if, I don't know if you've done any research on the Luciferians uh, and who, who those people are. They're a pretty evil bunch uh, who are very knowledgeable about uh, what's called occult knowledge. Occult means it's been occulted, it's been hidden from people. It is actually all of our knowledge. It's a sacred knowledge of how this human psyche works, it's how the universe works, but it's been occulted, it's been taken away, it's been stolen from us, from because it belongs to all, all, truth belongs to all. It's been taken away and now it's being used only by the few in a subversive way in order to control you. And that's why we're, for instance, like one of the ways to subversively use um, a, a holy, um, symbolism would be to like you know put the triangles on t-shirts and sell them you know or like uh, you know people make these symbols like this is supposed to mean 666 right that's very that's a way of, of putting out a subversive way of, of uh, changing a symbol that actually this this was the ankh um, and that is a way of circling energy and you you may notice it's actually really really cool and really powerful something that we can all do which is for instance if you're laying in a relaxing position with your eyes closed and breathing and just feeling your energy move through your body and then you lock your forefinger and thumb together you'll notice that your hand is going to get warmer because now you created a closed cir circuit loop um, and through these fingers you can radiate out energy and point it towards like your heart or so on because now you have a concentrated amount of like a current there's nothing evil about that but now like you know people do this and artists do that and it's a way like we recognize the ankh in our subconscious mind Carl Jung talked a lot about that you know how we have all these archetypes built within us and um so we recognize like our psyche recognizes that what it is but now it's, it has this veneer of evil, of it's for sale, right? It's used to seduce you, to hypnotize you on it. So now it kind of cancels out the good and it becomes meaningless. And now you, you no longer you want to use it because now we think it's evil. So you're not going to do that symbol while you're meditating or whatever it is you like to do because you're going to think you're doing an evil thing. Which I think could be farther from the truth. When you do an evil thing, I'll tell you what evil is. Evil is very simple. Evil is when you try to control somebody and take away their freedom. Especially if you're doing it in a covert way. Or if somebody is doing it to you in a covert way, trying to subjugate you, put you under their thumb. That is evil. And it ranges from subtle, you know, you know what I'm talking about, you've experienced it to uh, very overt uh, bombs dropping from the sky, you know, on, on innocent people uh, in faraway lands. So, whew, okay. So, uh, so the darkness is evil. Darkness isn't evil. Darkness is a sacred feminine. Darkness is the womb. We need darkness to rejuvenate. We need darkness to just be, this is a state of being versus the, the yang is a state of doing. We need both in balance so that, um, your third eye can open. I'm just here. I just said it. <laughs> this is this could be another whole other video. But the idea of um, being enlightened is when you have a very uh, good awareness of evil in the world. And that's another thing that really the New Age movement has done is it makes you only look towards the positive, which is actually um, point number two. But let's let's we'll, we'll get there in just a second. But I just wanted to explain this to you that evil is not necessary to balance out the good. It is an absolute perversion. It's a belief system that is extremely toxic. Do not believe in it for a moment. It is done in a way to make you look the other way and not call it for what it is. That's what it's about. This whole new age thing, the way it's been usurped, the way it's been spun, the whole idea is to just make you um, submit, not question, to stand down instead of standing up. So, um, should not tolerate it. You should not tolerate it. Um, and, uh, and another thing that really ties with um, 
The other thing that really ties with, with this point, I, I just made a note for myself here, is um, something that um, my ex, way ex-partner, um, the long-term brainwashing um, relationship I was in since I was 19 years old, a long time ago, something that he told me, and he said, because I was always very interested in astronomy, I was interested in physics, I was interested in ancient history, like I was always digging, digging, digging for, for truth. And I was always blown away why this stuff isn't taught. Why do I have to, you know, do my own research? And now I know the reason why it isn't taught because this knowledge is dangerous for people who are trying to control you because the more you know, the more often you're going to say no. So, um, so he, what, what he used to say to me is that, oh no, you're, you're never going to know. Like, we're never going to figure this out. You know, this is such a mystery. Um, this, this universe, this life is such a mystery that it's impossible to know, which is another form of deception because it actually isn't true. And the way it is, um, the way we're being deceived is for, uh, through something called obfuscation and it's a man-made complexity of systems. You know, imagine like a clockwork of things, you know, and the, the whole, you know, oh my God, quantum mechanics and all that stuff. Like, Hi, my, this is so complicated. Really? Go into the woods, go into the meadow, look at a flower, and you'll have all the answers right there. The truth is really simple. Nature, nature operates at, at very, very simple principles. And one of those principles is uh, the law of duality, the, the law of polarity, which is this one step down from unity, from the one you get split into two. You need that so the two can then come back together and produce another one. Right, the, the child. So you have the mother principle, the father principle. They come together and they produce the child, and then there's another one being produced over there, and they, they all inherit one um, form of uh, polarity or the other, so they can then come together again and do this again, and this process just continues on. If you're more interested in learning about um, what are the principles of life, you know, really simple and really like hone in, like without having to spend <laughs> decades of time. Even though I highly, highly recommend recommend during research into truth is like one of the best things uh, you can ever do because like what's more important than knowing the truth it will set you free um, but I would look into this uh, seven hermetic principles um, and also the work of Walter Russell um, highly recommended he's he's an, an, a physicist contemporary of Einstein actually who had a way more complete cosmogony way more complete um, um, theory of how the universe operates than Einstein ever did. And Einstein's was actually really incomplete and it is my belief, belief I, I haven't tested it, I don't know if it's true, that's, that's why it's belief, uh, that uh, one of the reasons why Einstein was so glorified um, as opposed to somebody like Walter Russell is because Walter Russell was a very peaceful man um, who wanted, as well as Tesla, they were friends, uh, who wanted to give this information, give this knowledge away to people uh, to empower them, whereas uh, Einstein was uh, very much so um, in cahoots. I don't know, uh, he was probably manipulated to, to some degree with the powers that be, who then later used his knowledge and all the, to build up atomic bomb and blah, 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 and then, you know, the rest of this history. So he was their guy, you know, he was their hero. So everybody talks about Einstein, he was the genius, not Walter Russell, who was way above, or Tesla, way above Einstein. So so this is some extra information that I wanted to give to you guys uh, if you want to go deeper down that rabbit hole. All right, deception number two. It is uh, ignore the negative. It's all about positivity. Like, negative doesn't exist. Like, sh 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 don't. I'm just trying to, like, you know, have a moment here. Can you, like, please don't disturb it? That kind of attitude. Yeah, that's very damaging, very toxic. And that's also part of the reason why we are in the shit that we are in is because nobody wants to talk about it because how dare you disturb my energy field here, right? Well, the problem is, is that, again, it makes you ignore uh, the uh, the evil that is raging, uh, that is just roaming about free and unchecked. Whether it is out in the world, whether it is at, home, at your home, it doesn't matter. I've been so many times manipulated by that uh, nine year long, nine year long in that nine, nine year long relationship by this person uh, who who used to use that against me all the time, all the time, and it's um, you know. 
I would raise a point to ask about this or that and whenever it just did not quite sit well with him he would just throw it right back at me and say well you just you just can't be peaceful you just can't um you know you, pra you gotta practice what you preach you're reading all these self-help books true i did um and but, but you like you always agitate it you know why while, while he is you know draining my bank account while he is you know having um i don't know how many affairs on the side while he is you know doing all sorts of shit uh and i'm sensing it i'm sensing something's up but how dare you how dare you say anything you know uh you want to be positive you want to be happy be happy. He used to tell that to me all the time. He's like, I just want you to be happy. Like, why can't you just be happy? Right. So why can't we just be happy? So this kind of um, thinking um, makes us avoid it because, the, the, avoid the truth because it is uncomfortable. And it is uncomfortable for a reason. And the only way to process it is to go through it, is to actually excavate it, is to get to the bottom of it until you get to the actual bottom of it completely clean out your plate, completely clean out your, your cave, whatever, your, your soul, and get to the root of it and pull that freaking root out, you're never gonna find peace. And they're gonna do anything and everything they possibly can in order to sway you all sorts of directions so that you don't go there. So that you don't go there and, and point at them and say, aha, you've been doing this all along. It wasn't me, right? And of course, as I mentioned in my uh, other video, um, which is the three words the narcissist will never say. They'll never tell you that they were wrong. They'll never tell you that they were sorry. They'll never admit to having made a mistake or manipulated you. Okay, so the, so the opposite side of, of negativity is, oh, it's all good, man. You know, life is good. Like, why? Let's not let's not go there. Let's not think about it because you're gonna create that reality. You're gonna create a negative reality. Now, that form of thinking leads down a very dangerous avenue called solipsism. I highly recommend you uh, look into that, solipsism. It's a very dangerous ideology. And basically what it says is that there is no other, that the universe exists only for you. It's only for you. And I'm seeing it gain a lot of ground in the millennial circles and it scares the shit out of me because if a lot of people are going to think that way, forget about empathy because you're only going to think about yourself. This is the most selfish way of looking at the world. Nobody, and it's actually also very lonely. <laughs> so I don't know why people like it, but it basically says nothing else exists. Um, I mean, everything exists for all entertainment. Everything exists for you to cater to you. You are the only mind. You are the mind of God. Truth is, we're like drops in the ocean. We all have access to the mind of God through our journey within and through uh, really being connected to this world and understanding the principles of, of, um, of nature that we shouldn't harm one another, harm one another and, and, and through creativity. I mean, there's so many ways to be plugged in to this universal uh, divine mind through going within and without both. You can't just do ones, two. Um, so, um, but solipsism is going to kill that and it's going to say, no, 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 you're the only person that exists. You're the only person, uh, you're, you're God. I mean, this is like, I mean, man, people who think this way must like, they really believe they're God and they feel like they believe that they can do anything. And that and here's the danger with it too, is that, okay, well, pff, people starving in Africa, who cares? You know, I, I'm creating it. So, you know, so obviously it's like, it's, it's, it's just movie, um, uh, wars in the middle East, who cares? You know, uh, economies crashing, who cares? You know, I'm just, this is, this is my movie. I'm living in a movie. <sighs> Wake up people. This is, <laughs> Only if you're so ignorant that you just, you don't pick up a book to, 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 I mean, forget about studying anything when you think that way. This is like the ultimate dead end. Like if you, if you're there, if someone's there, there's like, there's no hope. That's it. That's, that's it. Okay. Um, but, but there is, there's a catch here. Um, for instance, like you can, you can actually, um, ask these people, though they will think that they're, you're the figment of their imagination if you do, but you can tell them, you know, what happens if you jump off a cliff, you know, for instance, uh, are you going to just fly? Like, are you going to make, grow your wings or, you know, um, and they, and they might say, well, no, I'm not going to do it because I don't quite know how to do it. Well, if you are the omnipotent, um, God of creation, like, shouldn't you know how to do these things? You know, can you like create a car right here, like in front of you right now? And then, oh my, can you make me vanish? 
English? Can you do? Of course, they can't do that. And they'll tell you, you know, but I do. I don't know. Like this is part of the, you know, part of the experience, part of the play is that you know because if I knew everything, that game would end anyway. It just it goes in loops. It's like world word salad of the narc. It's very similar. It's just like bullshit, bullshit on top of bullshit, and it's just like it's best to just like leave. I'm telling you, pick up, pick up a good book and instead, and and don't pay any mind to to this kind of person. So okay, so the second the new age deception is that there is no evil. There is the, uh, don't ignore negativity. Don't ignore negativity. If you are feeling bad, if something feels wrong within you, address it right there and then. Or if you can't address it right then, then you know put it on aside for a moment and then return to it. Pay attention to how you feel. Listen to your inner compass. It speaks the truth. It's trying to call your attention. That's why it nags. That's why it hurts. That's why you're obsessed about it. Is because it needs your attention. So I just wanted to say that. All right. Um, deception number three is that force is evil, or that, or that it's bad, or that anger is bad. Like we shouldn't feel angry. Anger is really bad. Um, so uh, here's the thing: force is or you know intense energy is necessary in order to move things quickly in order to lift heavy stuff so force isn't evil in and of itself what is evil however is um violence and what the narcissists do is they flip the equation upside down again i've been through it i don't know a thousand times maybe in my life uh my god i mean <laughs> This is just their favorite way of thinking is that, okay, they're going to incite violence, which means that they're going to somehow find a way to attack you. And the good ones are doing it in a covert way. So it's almost hard to tell. You just feel like a sting, like something just like hit you, you know, like, oh, like that, that sucks. That stinks. What they, why did they just say that? You know what they mean? Da, da, da. We think about it. Da. Well, something happened. There's, they, they tried to do it and they did it on purpose. Or it can take a very uh, pronounced form, which is that you actually get hit, you actually get hurt. So um, then you try to stand up for yourself and say, no, this is wrong. Don't do this. And they're going to say, well, why are you being all so defensive about this? Right? Look at you. Look at you now. Or, or they push you, push back. Maybe not literally, but may, or, or literally, you know, a husband throws a, 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 their wife down on the couch or the other way around happens too. You know, a woman sinks her claws into a man's chest and the man pushes her back. And now she's all, oh, how dare you touch me? Don't touch me, right? That is, there's a big difference between violence and self-defense. Violence is bad. It's wrong to start it. The person who started it is at fault. If you come back with counterforce to defend yourself, that's not violence. You have every right to stand up for yourself. And again, this, this form of religion, like anger is bad, like we shouldn't, we shouldn't say anything, we shouldn't say, we should be nice and polite, like turn the other cheek type of thing, total misinterpretation. I'm going to make a video about idioms and things from the, like wise things from the past that get really flipped, have been flipped on their head um, and, and uh, abused. Um, but so this video is going to be probably really long, so I'm just going to save that for later. But, you know, the idea is that... Um, yeah, you turn the other cheek and then you're going to get bruised on the other side, you know, even out your scars. And they're going to do that. I, I got that so many times, you know, I would stand up for myself and say, well, why did you say that? Why did you think I would, I would start to, or I would react by crying. I got hurt so many times, you know, he would, say, he would say something and I would just, it would be so painful that tears would just start streaming down my face and I would want to like control it and hold back because I'm like, you know, I want to be in control of my emotions and I don't want to show that I'm this. And then I eventually all the damn broke and I started crying. Why are you crying? You know, why? What now? What? What? Why can't you just be happy? You know, and I'll be like, because da, 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 da. Well, now you're being defensive and you see like you can't fucking win with that because they're always going to find a way <laughs> in their sick mind and you want to do good and you've been indoctrinated into this way of thinking that you, you know, Got to be polite, got to be a good girl or a good boy, you know, got to treat the woman with respect. Again, it applies to both sexes. I'm not, th these, my videos, and somebody made a comment the other day, like, um, you know, it's because of you that we have the um, uh, MGTOW movement. And I'm like, I don't think you have watched my video to the end because <laughs> it's, I, I don't defend women here. I do not defend women. I had no, actually m more women in my life have been narcissists than men. So, um, you know, uh, this goes both ways. So please know that. 
so um so anyway so yeah okay so i wanted to talk about this this anger thing and uh i think i've more or less um described everything um you know it's like and i'm not saying that you should be walking around pissed and you know every time somebody like says something to you that i, I know you won't because the kind of person that you are but um uh, um but you know like walking and walking time bomb if you find yourself like you're a walking time bomb that everything just triggers you that means you need a deep healing you need to be with yourself you need to be with your emotions be very kind to yourself uh, practice positive self-talk and um you know there's there's lots of great material out there on on healing modalities in fact i'm actually i finished i finished my first uh program that i made for you it's gonna be free it's gonna be on my website i just need to get my website finished so uh hopefully it will be ready soon um and you'll get access to it but it's about you know some of the early steps you can take uh, shortly post abuse in order to bring your bring some relief to yourself and really get those emotions out you know don't hold it in we can't keep it in because it's gonna it's gonna start affecting our organs it's going to um it's gonna say it's, it's, it's a silent killer you know um I think there's a lot of connection with all sorts of chronic uh, illnesses but i'm not a doctor so i can't really uh, talk about that here so so um so the idea is what do you do with this you know what do you do with this kind of uh, energy with this force that you hold within yourself you can actually channel it towards something positive you can take that force and stand up for ju for justice you can become a defender of truth you can become a researcher you can start reading books you can start educating yourself about this and 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 take up some kind of a cause uh find a mission find a purpose in the evil that's been done to you by turning it around and using it to your advantage um so, but the idea of it is to make you basically passive and submissive, uh, to uh, so that you you can be walked all over, um, and uh, to 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 tolerate the fact that your rights are being violated on both again on a mass scale as well as on a micro scale. The key is again balance is to uh, to balance force and assertiveness with care and love for other beings and compassion. When you bring the two together. Oh, you're golden and it takes practice and it's a daily practice of doing that all right um number four point number four is there's no one to blame there's no one to blame and this is where this is this is really um very intense subject for me and i could go on about this for a long time i'm going to try to keep it brief but it's the whole idea of karma and how that is being perverted here like well, the reason why you are in this relationship, the reason why you've been abused in your, in your childhood is because of karma. We have no fucking proof of any soul contracts, of anything we've done in our past lives. Even though I do, again, I must use the word believe in reincarnation. Actually, I wouldn't say that I fully believe in it. I think it makes sense that the soul continues on. I don't see a complete uh, nihilistic end after this life. I see a transformation of energy and consciousness. It makes sense. It's like you take a piece of paper, you light it up, ash, and you get the ash, and then you get the, the energy leaves, you know, the, with the flame. It doesn't vanish. Nothing vanishes. Things just change and shift. But to say, especially to, like, You've been raped as a, when you were three years old. Yeah, well, that's because of your karma. I'm like, I just, I'm just so sick of that form of thinking. And um, I mean, like right now, I'm getting riled up just thinking about it. It is not true. We have absolutely no proof. There is such thing as the karmic law in the universe, but it's been severely misinterpreted for a long, long time and abused, starting in India with the caste system, the untouchables, the this and that. I love yoga. I love, um, you know, there's there's certain cultural things about Hinduism and, and this, this is not in any way for me to, to, to talk down on that. But that one area, I just, I just don't get it. You know, how can you say that because you were born to this family, you're an untouchable or that you're, you're, you're princely and then therefore the, like this whole thing is just, a, it's a system of slavery that we've been so indoctrinated into, you know, again, this could be another whole other subject, so I'm not going to go there too far, but so the true law of karma is the law of cause and effect. It's a law of cause and effect. It's basically, okay, if I do this, if I drink some water here, I'm going to be, I'm going to have to go pee. <laughs> That's it. You know, if you do one thing, 
another thing is gonna have to is gonna come on its on its um, end. You know, uh, you make love, you may have a baby, right? You spend your money recklessly, you're gonna get broke. Um, you drive your car too fast, uh, and uh, after you have drink, you may get in an accident. Cause and effect. The thing with this law is that that makes us get in so much trouble around it and and abuse it so much and misin misinterpret it is because it does not oftentimes um, um, like the cause the, the effect doesn't come immediately after the cause. There's the, there's a time lag. It takes a while. Like you do something. Like, for say, let's say um, you work on a business, right? You work on something. You work on it really hard and hard, and nothing happens for like a long time. Months go by. Sometimes even years go by and it's like, oh, it's just that. and then suddenly that one day comes and you hit that point and it just goes like, Phew! you know, um, that, that's often how it is. So it's like, it comes to a point of concentration and then eventually it manifests, you know, it just, you see the effect. Um, but to say to someone that the reason why they are being abused or they have been abused is because they earned it in uh, through through some past life experience or something it's it's in one of the most insidious forms of abuse in my view it's um it's very toxic and it's a cop out on the uh, on the side of the abuser who wants to just control they will not give you uh, arguments they will not give you um um any uh, logical explanation because there really isn't any there really isn't any but it's it's a kind of like this subtle current that belief system that kind of like runs under and many many victims often think that you know i must have done something i've been there i, I to this day i still catch myself i'm like i have a bad day sometimes it's just a bad day it happens to all of us you know not much happens i don't know what to do with myself i'm getting kind of annoyed and nothing's coming out right I, I don't feel like writing i don't feel like doing anything and you know this is we have days, we all have days like that. And I, and I do fall into the, to, to, like I catch myself, but it goes like, what did I do something yesterday? Maybe that's just like a payback for something that I had done. You know, maybe I said something, did I say something not negative to someone? Maybe it's like a form of punishment. I'm like, oh God, no, <laughs> it's not a form of punishment. Energy ebbs and flows, you know, and we are part of this oceanic movement of energy and we're bathing not only in the earth's magnetic field and energy field but also each other's so we can feel each other and what each of us is doing so all of it affects everything else you know and um so keep that in mind and um and uh, do not subscribe to the no blame mentality okay <laughs> i'm gonna tell you that um this whole idea about this is about not confronting the abuser, not confronting the people who are doing the really evil thing. When somebody is doing something evil to you, when somebody is hurting you, it is not because you did something way back whenever, that you can't, so far back that you can't even remember, but it's because you are in contact with an abusive person. It's really that simple. The reason why you're being abused is because there's an abuser abusing you, because there's a bad person doing something negative to you. That's it, it's that, see how we've been just, like our minds have been under so much mind control, it's been under so much subversive, negative, entangled, spaghetti-like belief systems that are all just kind of mixed up. All of it is done from many different directions in order to just make you submit, take a passive stance, and accept the beating. Turn the other cheek, keep turning turning and then just it's gonna keep coming it's just gonna keep coming and you're inviting that more of that in so no say no to that all right and final um final part here is um no resistance i'm looking through some other notes because i may have skipped some things that i wanted to tell you but um i'll, I'll come back so no resistance that's really the goal that's really the goal is to just like you allow allow accept 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 and submit, you know, do not react. Do not, do not react, do not react. You know, something bad is happening to you, don't react, take it in, take it in, just observe, just watch it, don't react, zip it. Um, so this is how you create legions of people who are going to basically go along with the agenda, they're gonna go along with the plan, all the while uh, terrible evil is raging in the world, all the while terrible evil is raging underneath your uh, roof. 
and it really takes some guts. It takes guts to stand up to it. And uh, but I gotta tell you, it's just like with any practice, it's a practice. Um, and and oh, here something I thought about yesterday when I was uh, having dinner to, and, I, and I want to put it into this video. It's something that actually is not mine. This is from John Bradshaw. I love, love, love this psychologist. So John Bradshaw said um, to, to do this practice with a friend. It's really cool. Take a friend out and just walk around and tell them uh, to do this exercise with you. Basically, they're going to be proposing all sorts of things that, you, uh, that day for you guys to do. And it doesn't have to be a whole day, it can be an hour or two. And your task is to say no <laughs> to everything they say. It's just to make you practice it. It is such a phenomenal practice. You're gonna feel so refreshed and empowered after this. Just walk around and say, oh, you should wear this outfit. No, no. And you don't even say why not, just say no. Or let's go for pizza, no. Let's da 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 da, no. Say no, <laughs> say no to everything. <laughs> Gotta try it. It's it's really awesome. So no resistance. Um, again, this this leads to um, all sorts of very toxic avenues. You know, um, uh, the idea is to oh here come the bells. Uh, I'm gonna leave it this time. Um, the, the the idea is to take no action and to let it be, which is it kind of ties in with the whole secret thing and a law of attraction that I want to just plug in here a little bit. Uh, I hope that many of you have caught up uh, to the uh, deception of that. And the way you're being deceived by the law of attraction is not that it doesn't exist because it does, but in a way that you're not being given the whole picture of how it works. And the way it works is through something called unity consciousness. And unity consciousness is when you have your thoughts, your emotions and actions all in one line. So what you think, what you feel, and what you do. And when all of that is in harmony, then you can uh, very quickly get things done. You move through life like an arrow and you feel super empowered. And right now, if you have been through narcissistic abuse, if you're in the process of healing, um, keep that in mind and keep in mind that that's what you're essentially doing is you're learning to bring back into this central point, into this middle path. Uh, your thoughts, your emotions, and um, and your actions. And oftentimes what happens is the action part comes kind of at the end. You know, that's that's the point where you like, you really get the final push. Although it is really healthy to start taking action even before everything else is healed because it's going to propel you that, that much faster in your healing. But initially like the, the, the mental uh, alignment comes through getting rid of the cognitive dissonance. Once the cognitive dissonance goes away, you're gonna regain that inner balance, that inner peace. And one uh, of my, my favorite ways that I, that I discovered a little bit uh, too far after I have been through it myself, but I, I'm actually sharing this more in depth in my SOS program that I will be uh, putting out, is to focus on uh, using your logic your linear thinking in bringing you back to the present moment. So instead of being swayed through the impressionable uh, side of the uh, holistic mind that just want, that just takes everything and it absorbs and absorbs all the information and often absorbs also toxic information, you need to bring in discernment of the logical, rational mind and balance out the two, uh, the two sides of your thinking so that you can arrive at balance. So that's the mental side. Now the, the feelings, the healing in the heart are, happens after you've been able to purge all the, uh, all the toxicity from it. So you do that by deep breathing, you do it by crying, you do it by dancing, you do it by screaming if you have to. Whatever it is that you need to do in order to give yourself that, that ability to be emotionally relieved also you don't have to scream and rage and go all out. You can do it all in a very subtle way just by observing, watching yourself, watching whatever you're feeling and surrounding yourself with a loving embrace so that these emotions can come up because they have their teachers. They have messages encoded in them. You know, why do I feel afraid? Yesterday, I had a huge epiphany. I was walking around uh, to, here in Split in Croatia and I'm, I, had a I had a beautiful day yesterday. I had one of my best days of my life and I felt so great. And then suddenly towards the evening, I felt something in my stomach. I'm like, oh, what the fuck is that? You know that? And I was, and at first I was a little annoyed because I wanted the bliss to continue, but then I'm like, okay, well, what is it? What is it? And I started digging deeper, dig dig digging deeper. And what I discovered, I'm actually gonna make a video about it because it ties in with uh, borderline abuse that I've been exposed to since a child, but it's the whole idea of 
basically not being able to feel bad, not being able to like always um, having to present myself from 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 a way in, in a way in a side that doesn't annoy other people, so that other people are happy with me, even though I may not feel good right now. I I, I couldn't show my authentic face. And that's where that led me. And once I got to the core, to, to the root of it, I felt so liberated. So, you know, these feelings come up, they have a message. They have a message. And you know, that message really resonated with me. Um, and the other message that will come will resonate with you. So just excavate it, go deep, you know, uh, put in that invest investigator's hat and go inside. Don't be afraid. These emotions are not going to hurt you. They just want to come up. They're just going to come up. So. Create a safe space within yourself, hold yourself tight, cultivate your self-love and let them come up and then just watch it. Just watch the jewels on your hands. And maybe at first they're going to be covered in mud. That's okay. Just let it, let it happen and let the tears of your sadness or let the light of your awareness cleanse them and reveal the radiance of who you really are inside and the messages that they're bringing to you. So I wanted to tell you all that um, with respect to uh, emotional healing and how you're going to bring your emotions with the mind and with the action which then you're going to feel so much more empowered and liberated from all the muck and the shit that has been weighing you down to really go for your dreams and um create some amazing things in your life and touch other people and inspire other people in the process so um so that's a great place to be in and i wish this for all of you and i and i really do believe i really do believe that this new age movement uh, has been absolutely co-opted by evil forces in order to make you take and take as much abuse that's coming from the with, without and within you we then internalize it that's what makes us also susceptible to abuse from other people that's what if we don't heal it makes some of us abuse our children and then it just kind of continues down that path and it just gets worse and worse and worse which is i think one of the reasons why we're seeing that this uh condition is getting uh, uh, more intense you know it's uh, it's getting worse in many ways so let's put brakes on it let's stop it and let's stand up for truth and then teach other people to do it also free people free people right let's stand up for freedom so well, real quick why do i think it's in a religion uh religion comes from a latin word religare and what it means is it means to hold back to uh tie back that's what the meaning of religare is and you can see how that is indeed the truth is that you kind of going down the path of truth you're wanting to connect with the divine you're wanting to connect with a higher source and you're like almost almost there you're like almost seeing the light and then it's like damn you need somebody to take you there. You need a prophet. You need a Jesus. You need, you know, so nothing against Jesus. I know a lot of people who watch my videos are very Christian. And I just want to say this. If you follow Jesus' teachings, hats off. <laughs> but for all the people who say that they're stunned for Jesus and they're great Christians, but then they support war, you know, and then they abuse each other and then they beat up their wife, you know, or, or, or their husband and, or they cheat and lie <laughs> and they're greedy people, you know, who are just, it's all about status and that's not Christians. Okay. Again, that could be a completely different uh, video, but if you're real, a true Christian, then you follow what Jesus has said, which is that basically it's, it's really, again, super simple. It's, 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 it's respect each other. Um, let's, um, stand up for truth. And Jesus actually was not, uh, a, a pacifist. That is again, something that has been completely, um, spun off in the wrong direction. I highly recommend if you're into Jesus to, uh, in, in his teachings, read the book, um, by Reza Aslan called the zealot fantastic book. It's going to really show you who he was as a historical figure not so much as uh, the Christ that we, um, that's been the, the image that's been pushed out through uh, the church, which is um, um, not accurate. It's been, uh, it's been changed. It's been manipulated in order again to pull you into yet another belief system. So <laughs> there's no savior coming guys. There's no savior. There is, you are the savior. You are the savior that needs to save yourself and your own life. 
don't waste your life waiting for someone else, whether it is the, the partner, whether it is uh, some, some, some abstract idea, whether it is a historical figure, what is, you have within you all the answers that you need in order to, to save yourself and pull yourself out. And uh, again, nothing against people who, who, who believe in Jesus' teachings. That is, that is he, he was a really dynamic, amazing figure who came with a sword and he made a mess at the temple when he saw what they were doing up there in Jerusalem, what the Romans were doing and how they have convinced the, um, uh, the high priest at the temple, at the Solomon temple, um, or I don't know if it was called the Solomon's temple at that time, but you, you get the idea how they were taking money from poor people uh, for sacrifices in order to absolve their sins. What, what the fucked up system is that? You know, to, 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 <laughs> and then later that happened with, with the Christian religion uh, or Catholics and the indulgences, which gave rise to uh, Luther, Luther uh, Protestants through Martin Luther, the, the first Martin Luther. Anyway, so, so it was like, you know, it's, it's a business. I, w I was just in um, Vatican. In fact, I'm going to put the video from Vatican at the end of this video so you guys can see it. I was just in Vatican <laughs> and I walked to the cathedral. My, I gasped. I don't know how many billions are embedded inside of that church. The whole thing was just gold. The art, everything. It was just like so, it was such splendor. And, and it made me actually gasp at two things. First thing it made me gasp at was how incredible humans are and what, what we can create with our hands. You know, the art we're able to create, how beautiful. And then how where did that, all that money come from? Well, it came from people like you and me. It came from people who want to do good and who want to, um, you know, be absolved of their sins. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's, it's, all, it's, it's all really backwards. So I'm going to put that video at the end um, so that you can uh, take a look at uh, what Vatican looks like from the inside. And, uh, and I, hope you, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that it um, gave you some empowerment. I'm just going to look down if there's anything else I wanted to tell you, you know, no saviors coming, no UFO, no, no aliens are coming. In fact, I think if I was one of the aliens uh, and I look down at what's happening on Earth, I would be saying, you know what, keep them down there until they figure their shit out before we let them out to join the other, you know, civilizations out there. Because these guys, uh, they're not really nice. Um, so I would quarantine <laughs> this planet. Anyway, um... So um, remember, the, the new age, there, there are some good tenants. To use your critical thinking. I'm not saying that all of it is bad, okay? Yeah, that's important to say. Not all of it is bad. There's a lot of really good uh, messages, good empowering messages in, this, in the new age movement, but you gotta bring your critical mind into it. Study critical thinking if you can. Uh, read books, educate yourself. The word libre, libre, um, which means a book in uh, Latin. Uh, the same root as liberty, freedom. The more you know, the more free you are. So I encourage you to, to, to start really educating yourself about what's really going on out there and start holding yourself in a really high regard because you are an incredibly high expression of life on this planet and you hold within yourself so much power. It would blow your mind and it will in a good way. <laughs> as it's blowing mine right now, you know, as, as to what it is that we can do and how, how incredible capable we are of, uh, of really transforming our lives and, and, and doing amazing things in a very short period of time. Here's another one, one last thing I want to say, oh my God, I'm over an hour, um, which is that there's so many people who, uh, it's getting dark here, by the way, I think you can, I know you can still see me, but just want to let you know, sun has already set here, but, um, for those of you who worry about the fact that, oh, maybe you're in your 60s, maybe you're in your 70s, you know, what's the point of uh, changing my life right now? It's like, I'm, I'm too old, I'm this, you know, that. Okay, let me tell you something. When you really take this seriously and really focus on your healing and really focus on truth and really excavate your soul to find out who you are, the moment you make those connections, and it's not going to be like one moment, it's going to be a series of moments and you're going to keep gaining momentum. You're going to become so focused and so driven and so powerful that in a very short period of time, you'll be amazed. In a short period of time, you will be able to 
creates such change and transformation in your life that, listen, t next year is going to come regardless. And it's you're either going to be in the same place where you are now or worse. Usually when we're still in those relationships, when you're still surround ourselves with those people, it does get worse because the nine, the nine, they now know the threshold, how far they can push us, right? So the next year is going to come or you can start taking the steps now. It's going to be painful and it's going to feel weird because you're going to have to be changing your thinking but it's also going to feel good. It's going to feel bad and good at the same time. It's like the old shit has to go, new stuff coming in. So it's really important that you're doing both, not just letting go of stuff, of old stuff, but also keep bringing new energy in. That's why it's really important to dance, to breathe, take classes, learn new languages, go travel, expose yourself to new stuff. Maybe not in like a huge way, but any way you possibly can while you're journaling, while you're doing therapy, while you're doing coaching, whatever it is that, that, that resonates with you. And uh, as you're doing that, you're, you're filtering things out, you're doing this exchange. It takes about two months for uh, quite a bit of change to occur. Six months, you're, you're able to change your neurology, your neuro, neuro pathways in your brain. You're gonna start, basically you're gonna start looking at the world really differently, six months. About a year later, you're gonna be in a, very, you're gonna be in a different place because the moment you start to look at things differently, the moment you start to think differently, you won't be able to help yourself. You're going to want to do things differently. It's like a natural expression. And that's great. I want to encourage that, you know, and, and the cleansing out is going to give you more energy. So you're going to do more. And then once your new life is anchored in truth rather than fiction, rather than somebody else's bullshit fed to you in order to control you, once that happens, you're free. You, you're, like a, you're like a balloon that you're going to cut off all of those sandbags. They're, they're going to start falling and dropping and your balloon's going to rise. You're going to start rising and you're going to gain more, more power. And the people who are your true allies who are going to recognize, wow, you're really doing an amazing thing in the world. I want to help you. You're going to start getting alliances. You're going to start meeting people who are going to really resonate. You're going to start inspiring people and then it's just going to build. And the momentum will keep getting faster and faster and more and more exponential. So it's never too late. Start today, start today. Make yourself the art piece of your life. Make your life the expression, the highest expression of whatever it can be, right? And you'll see the magic that you can create with that. So I wish you guys all the best. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if there are things that you have other questions, if some things were not clear. Share with other people, share your experiences of brainwashing. I mean, uh, you know, there's so many insidious ways. Like we got exposed this stuff, so we're not burdened by these heavy belief systems. Like we can't point blame. Like we can't defend ourselves. We can't stand up for each other. We know that evil is necessary in the world. How insidiously disgusting. We can have this planet be a beautiful, harmonious paradise that it was intended to be. It can absolutely happen. But right now, unfortunately, the, <laughs> most people are not going along with that kind of, uh, even though they, there's a will, they want it, but they're not doing anything about it. You know, they're kind of half asleep walking to life, just kind of, you know, in this lukewarm state, I call it, like this lukewarm state. And things are not too bad, things are not too good. Plus I'm super busy, you know, with my life. I don't have time to do this, da, da, da. Well, you be the instigator, you be the trailblazer, because <sighs> let me tell you, if you do this, if you stand up for truth, if you stand up for your truth, you're going to feel this massive tsunami of positive energy propelling you forward. And you're gonna to get to live a life that very few people live. And it's a life that's uniquely your own. And it's not a um, copy of somebody else's. Okay, one hour, seven minutes, wow. All right, so I wanna, again, send you guys lots of love from Croatia. Um, Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking with me through the end. I really enjoyed making this video. I hope it translated. And I look forward to seeing you in the comments below and seeing you in another video. You take care and bye-bye.